Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're taking a look at a five-volume book, so I have it set out on the table here rather than trying to juggle all five volumes at once. This is The Machine Gun by Colonel, retired, George M. Chin of the United States Navy. And this is a really impressive set of literature. Um, now, these were originally published in the 1950s, with the exception of the fifth volume, which I believe was published, well, I know was published substantially later because it covers developments during and after the Vietnam War. The first four comprise, well, kind of an encyclopedia of all things automatic weapon. Uh, Chin wasn't really quite so interested in shoulder-fired small arms as he was in larger can uh, automatic cannons and heavy, heavy machine guns, as we discussed in some uh, terminology video previously. And these books were actually for some time uh, classified, not heavily classified, but they were actually classified. Today, they're all uh, unclassified and freely available. And what's really cool about these is, on the one hand, finding an actual physical set of all five volumes is an extremely expensive and honestly kind of difficult proposition. I lucked out finding these. Uh, in fact, I actually got these in a batch of books from the Rock Island Auction Company. They occasionally sell books, and that's a cool place to look if you are building a firearms library. At any rate, it's not hard to spend a thousand bucks just to get a full set of these books in print. Which I know immediately people go, oh, well, haha, <laughs> forget that. However, the first four volumes of this were printed by the U.S. Navy, by the Bureau of Ordnance, and they are in the public domain. And you can go and download them in their entirety for free, entirely legally. So I have links in the description text below where you can find those. My understanding is the fifth volume was published privately um, and is copyrighted. However, the sources that have the first four volumes available for download also have the fifth, so I'll, I don't know, uh, I'll just leave you with what other people have supplied on the net. Now, this is five volumes, so if we start with volume one here, this is basically a history of the machine gun as you would think of, well, a machine gun, an early machine gun. Light machine guns, medium, heavy. Uh, this covers, in fact, the formal title is The Machine Gun. History, Evolution, and Development of Manually Operated, Full Automatic, and Power-Driven Aircraft Machine Guns. And if we go to the table of contents, uh, part one is Forerunners of the Machine Gun. So that's going to be uh, manually operated machine guns. Uh, or I'm sorry, part one is like just what were guns a long time ago. Part two is where it gets interesting. That's the manually operated guns. Part three is development of the machine gun. So this is going to start with Maxim and then cover Browning, Hotchkiss, uh, a lot of the early guns. And what's really cool about Chin is, and this goes throughout all of these books, he covers a lot of guns that aren't normally found uh, anywhere. So for example, in his uh, part three, early-ish automatic uh, machine guns, he includes Berthier machine guns, Chelman machine guns, uh, the Laird Mentin machine gun, the McLean gun, the Perino, the Carr, the Skoda, a lot of guns that you just don't find any information about anywhere else. Uh, part four is aircraft weapons, and part five is aircraft cannons, so guns that are 20 millimeter and up. And this is um, early developments. So the, air, the automatic aircraft cannon, um, actually I'm sorry, are not automatic, they are aircraft cannon, which it's going to cover things like uh, the Becker, the early, the early Orlikan, the early Polston gun, uh, Vickers aircraft cannon, Ravelli aircraft cannon, etc. Um, and that, that includes like the World War I stuff that guys were mounting in aircraft. So that is volume one. I should also point out when it comes to the common guns, Chin Maiden isn't really the greatest source out there. Not necessarily because he has information that's wrong, although, I mean, it's like 2,000 pages total. There are some mistakes in these books, but these were originally written in the 50s. So today we have better information on some of these guns. For example, if you want to know about the Vickers gun, yeah, Chin has some good stuff, but the collector grade book on the Vickers has far more information. And a lot of that has become available because of, well, things like the internet that give us access to more information. Uh, anyway, moving on, volume two is 
by far the thinnest one of the bunch. This is only, what, like 300 pages, 200 pages, 200 pages. Uh, and this covers Soviet firearms development. So this one was also, for obvious reasons, classified for some time. Uh, and this is History, Evolution, and Development of Manual, Automatic, and Airborne Repeating Weapons by the Soviet Union and her Satellites. So if we look at the contents here, we have uh, early Maxim gun development, uh, followed by, well, basically all the main, uh, main, what firearm, main machine guns that the Soviet Union used. Does not include a lot of their strange prototype stuff, because Chin simply didn't have access to that during the Cold War. But uh, Degtyarev's, Goryanov's, uh, and then aircraft guns like the Shakas, uh, the Beresin, the NS and N, um, I mean all the way up to 75 millimeter recoilless aircraft cannon. So that's volume two. Volume three continues our history. Uh, development during World War II and the Korean conflict by the US and their allies of fully automatic machine gun systems and high rate of fire power driven cannon. So again, Chin covers machine guns, but my understanding is his real passion and interest was in uh, larger automatic cannon. So this guy is going to cover things like the US experimental 60 caliber machine guns, uh, experimental 20 millimeter machine guns that the US does. Oh, a whole variety of this, yeah, all the American machine gun development. And then there is, I believe, a bit in here on British um, and, and such as well. So aircraft cannon have not really been my forte, but when I start getting into those, this will be an extremely valuable resource. Now, we're going to change gears a bit because volume four is a little bit different. Uh, volume four is design analysis of automatic firing mechanisms and related components. This is an entire 600 plus page book on how automatic firearms actually work. All of the different operating mechanisms, for example, we have analysis of systems, blowback, uh, plain blowback, blowback with advanced primer ignition, delayed blowback, retarded blowback. One of the interesting things about Chin is he differentiates between delayed and retarded. Um, then we have recoil operated, short recoil. Uh, for example, page 99, mathematical analysis of short recoil. This is a subject that a lot of people ask me about fairly regularly. Like, where do I find a book on how to technically actually design firearm systems? And Chin is one of the few books out there that I actually am aware of that discusses this sort of technical material. Uh, there is then a section on gas operation, and then a whole series of illustrations of those sorts of mechanisms. So this is an entire book on how do guns technically actually work and some of the math behind them. And it's all available online for free. So if you're interested in this, it's really cool to have the, the hardback original physical books. That's why I have a set. But to be entirely honest, it, it's kind of a vanity thing because the whole book's available online, which means you can throw it on a thumb drive and take it with you anywhere. You can browse it on a smartphone. You don't need to spend any money whatsoever on the original actual books. Now, the last one that we'll take a look at here is volume five, which, like I said, yeah, it was printed um, privately, not printed by the Navy. And this is development, still the machine gun, by the way, development of full auto machine gun, fully automatic, machine gun systems, high rate of fire, power driven cannon, and automatic grenade launchers by the United States and her allies following World War II, the Korean police action, and the Vietnam conflict. So this is going to cover, well, basically what the name says, uh, cannon development after what's in volume three, and also automatic grenade launchers, uh, including, you may have recently seen, we had the Mark 18 Mod Zero, uh, that crank fired Vietnam era grenade launcher. Well, that's in here along with uh, well, along with the Mark 19 and a whole slew of other ones. Uh, revolver cannons, people are interested in those high rate of fire aircraft cannon and machine gun. How do they do that? Well, sometimes you can use multiple barrels. Sometimes you can use a single barrel with a revolver cylinder sort of feeding system. The problem you run into with very high rate of fire guns like that um, is, is really the, the problem you have too much um, chambering and extraction and ejection cycle going on. All of that stuff takes too much time. The actual firing, 
maybe isn't the problem. And so by using something like a revolver style of cylinder, uh, just like the M134 minigun does, that allows you to basically to delink cartridges and prepare them for firing while leaving them in a revolver cylinder so that as you're firing, you don't have to actually extract or eject a case before moving on to the next cartridge. You just leave it in its uh, chamber in that rotating cylinder and deal with the extraction and the ejection as that cylinder, as that, uh, well, as that cylinder rotates. So anyway, um, that's what is covered in volume five here. So uh, there is too much material for me to go into depth on. Uh, obviously you've been seeing inside the books. This is a really valuable resource for people. The, the history, there, like I said, there are some errors in this series because of when it was published and simply because of its scale. Um, something this big is bound to not quite be perfect. That said, it is an extremely valuable resource for people both for the history of machine guns and their development, which is extremely well covered from the very beginning through the Vietnam era, uh, for its coverage of aircraft guns, which are rarely covered anywhere at all, certainly not in this sort of depth, and in particular for its mechanical and mathematical analysis of automatic uh, self-loading firearm systems. So anyway, um, I am probably not going to bother putting a link where you can find the whole set for sale because there is no reliable place where you can find the set for sale. This is the sort of thing that shows up at uh, specialty book dealers, at gun shows occasionally, and at auctions like Rock Island or like the Julia Auction House. So I lucked out and found these. I can't give you a link to look. So I will, however, have links in the description text below where you can download them for free, which is pretty much every bit as good. Thanks for watching.